Beginning with example one, we want to go ahead and name three points that are collinear. So in this example, Mrs. Palermo, where do you see three points that are collinear? What does that word mean? So collinear meaning, so we're talking about three points, so points that are on the same line. So I got to look at that picture and I got to find three points that are on the same line. So I see M, O, and N are all on the same line there. Absolutely. Okay, so then what about three points that are not on the same line, not collinear? Okay, so what about P, O, and N? I could have chosen lots of different examples. I could have said M, O, and L, or M, O, and P. There's lots of ways. Of course, between any two points, there's going to be a line. We just needed something that is not sharing that same line with those other two points. Example two. So it says, the first part A says, name four points that are coplanar. So Mrs. Hogravey, What's coplanar mean? On the same plane. So four points that are on the same plane. Now this to me looks like a cube. Um, I'm not sure if it was a perfect cube or not, but we're gonna, it was our best attempt at a cube. So let's go ahead and as I talk about this, notice that there's like faces to these cubes that we see here. And so I'm looking at just that very front face that we're gonna see, that F, D, A, and G, those points are definitely all on the same plane of that cube. In distress, remember what coplanar means, she said, on the same plane, a plane contains at least three points. So we're looking for any three points that she lit names are coplanar anyway. But it's the fourth one that you gotta see does it match on the plane with the other ones. Um, part B, it says name four points that are not coplanar. Okay, so now I wanna look at one of those faces that the, each of those faces are coplanar. So I want to branch off and think of something that's not. So like for example, if I say F and D, those two points are a part of two different planes. They're the top part of that cube and the front part of that cube. So if I choose those two, I might want to say C and B because those, while C is still coplanar with them because through any three points there's a plane, B is definitely not. Good job, good job. All right, part C, it says name a point that is coplanar with these points. So they're giving you three points. Now, just to stress, this one's kind of a bit tricky. You have three points, A, B, A, B, and E. Now, right away you're looking at it and you're thinking, how is that, how are those points already in the same plane? But remember, any three points are coplanar. So kind of imagine these three are on the same plane. So what point would be coplanar with those other points? So F would have to be coplanar with those. And it does help when you start to draw that picture in because then you start to see, oh, they're looking at a, like a cross section uh -huh. of that cube. Awesome job. All right, for this next one, we're gonna be drawing five points, P, Q, R, S, and T, no three of which are collinear. Ooh. So no points here that are going to be, no three points that are going to be collinear. So two points can be on the same line. They have to be. Yeah, but then if you throw in that third point, it can't be on that line. All right, so if we start just listing here, here's like P, Q, what am I going to want to do then for you R? Wanna, you want to draw P, Q, we want R, you don't want R to be on that same line, so maybe drop it down a little bit. All Perfect. right, so here's my R. And same thing with this. I don't want it to continue with Q and R. So drop it down. Perfect. And, and then maybe move it over T. here with T. As long as those five points, basically no three again, are collinear. So you kind of have to space them out a little bit. Absolutely. Then they tell us to sketch. So PQ is supposed to be a line. line. So we're going to draw a line through point P and all the way through Q as best as you can. And again, you're gonna notice our drawings are just not super Hopefully beautiful. you did a better job than Mrs. Hope Gravy. Yeah. <laughs> and then RS is also going to be a? Line, so we're gonna draw a line through line the points R and S. And then they tell us that QR is a segment. So just connect the two points, no arrows notice because it's just a segment. And same thing with S and T. Another segment. 
and then TP is array. But notice, what does it have to start with? The initial point's T, so you gotta start at T and it's gotta go past line or point Q. So we're gonna draw a little arrow past that point. Point P, yeah. Perfect. Example four. So we got a picture here. It says, name this line. So Mrs. Hograby, what would you name this? Well, you know, my first instinct would be to call this line math, M-A-T-H, but we know that you can't do that because to name a line, all we need are two points. Good job, so good job. So just because you see our silly namings don't fall for that trick, <laughs> we know that this could either be line M-A, line A-T, line T-H, line M-H. There's so many ways we could name it. We'll just list a couple. But so basically what she's saying is you name it with, again, two points that are on that line. And when you name it, need the little line above it. These could be flip-flopped. Like you, she said, it could be lined A-T. You have lots of options. Now, for two pairs of opposite rays. I remember that opposite rays have to be collinear and they contain the same initial point. So as I'm looking at this, if I say that M is that initial point, I don't have another point on that line that I could continue to the left to really name that ray. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me use A as my initial point and call that ray AM. Good idea, I like your th thought here. And then something that would be collinear to that, I could call that other ray either AT or AH. Let's go with AT. And notice again how she's saying it, both these rays have the same initial point they both contain the same, again, the initial point, and they're going opposite direction, collinear. And you can also name, like Ms. Hogarby said, ray AH. So then since we need two pairs, the other pair I could have come up with would have been using T as my common initial point and calling that ray TA and ray TH. So there would be my two pairs of opposite rays. Good job. All right, this last one says to sketch the figure that's described. All right, for this first one, Mrs. Palermo, I'm going to let you go ahead and help me out with this. It says we want two lines that intersect and another line that does not intersect, either one. Okay, so my thought process is, let me go ahead and start by drawing two lines that do intersect. So we'll make that happen. Good job on the arrows. <laughs> and they intersect, they're sharing a common point. Now, if the other line does not intersect, so I need a third line. Huh, how am I gonna show this? Well, what if I draw... Because even if it was parallel to one of those mm -hmm. lines, it's going to intersect it's the other gonna one. It's going to intersect the... So what if I draw a plane that surrounds those two intersecting lines? And those two lines, let's say those two lines are in that plane, and I want to show that the third line actually doesn't, isn't contained in that plane, but goes through it. So how would I show that? What if we show it... Like, think about, like, a piece of paper as mm -hmm. a plane. If I stuck a piece of... A, like a pencil through a piece of paper, then it's not technically on that plane, but it does go through that. Yeah, plane. and but it's not, and I want that pencil, which is like the line, not intersecting those two planes that are actually on the plane. So maybe plane. if I draw, but to show that it kind of stops here and it goes through to where it's behind, uh -huh. where you can't really see it, I'm going to show some dotted lines now. Now, I know when you're looking at that, you're thinking, well, doesn't that intersect? But remember, those dotted lines, or dashed, or however you want to word it, it's basically showing it's going kind of behind that plane through at that point. So it's actually not ever touching those two lines. Kind of like when we had our cube. We had these dotted pieces in the back. There, this is not a whole bunch of lines just on top of each other in one plane. These are really showing some dimension. That's what the whole idea is here, too, is that we're showing dimension. Perfect. All right, now this last one says that we're gonna have three lines that intersect, but not all of them are gonna lie in the same plane. So they all intersect with each other, but they're not all in the same plane. Okay, so kind of like the last picture we drew. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna draw a plane. So draw a plane. Now again, a plane doesn't need to be four dimensional. I know it looks like that a plane could have, it goes just, it, the book likes to do it this way, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to draw three lines intersect, but not all in the same plane. Hmm. 
Well, two of them could be in the same plane, correct? Okay. So let's, I can draw two intersecting lines like the last one. But this time, my third point, plane, I mean, needs to intersect them. But let's say it goes through the plane at that point of intersection of the others. All right. So now it's still going to intersect with those two, but it just goes and can, oh, I guess it's not really dotted at the end because you'd see with the yeah. point of it. But yeah. Yeah. So you can see where it's coming through that plane, but then continuing on. So the first two lines that Mrs. Huckerby drew are in the same plane, but the third one is not. So when it says, but not all lie in the same plane, that works. 